going to be an interesting one. So I think this is the first video made on Glorious Battle. This is on the Pioneer server right now. They've given some chroniclers access to test the event to uh, make videos to preview it. And I was one of them that was given access. Now, I know there's a lot of excitement about this event, so I'm sure a lot of people are interested in the details of it. I will preface this by saying it's not completed. The event itself hasn't been tested yet at all. The way it works so far is it's only been open three hours and it's sort of time gated. It's in like a preparation phase right now where we can't uh, move on the map, we can't attack anyone, we can't progress out of our, our spawn area. So specifics of certain interactions are still alien to me. I have no idea about how combat works for example at all. It's an entirely new combat system that we haven't seen yet in game as far as I understand. So you'll have to bear with me and wait for more details and just more time to pass for uh, specifics on that to come out. But I can give you know, a general overview and some first impressions of it. So you can see here, if you click the exclamation mark, this is the matchmaking system. There will be eight kingdoms matched together uh, and they're all given a different spawn position on the map. So I'm on K2. That means I'm at Lord's Bane 4 over here. The map is absolutely huge. It's my mouse is sort of bugging out, not letting me zoom out. There we go. So there is well over a hundred locations you can fight for, as you can see. Each kingdom is given a different spawn point. There's three at the bottom here. There is two at either side and three at the top. They are, however, within the same distance of all the same locations. It is a very symmetrical map. You can see they all have the same buildings from equal distances to them. So you can see here at Sir of Justice, they have, if you go to the right, they have this building here and then there's four surrounding uh, buff castles or buff locations that you'll basically hold from holding this castle. I feel like these spots on the map are going to be very, very high priority because if you hold this, I assume you're going to be able to hold all four of these surrounding locations because the other kingdom will have to get through this location itself to get to them and then you'll be holding all these buffs simultaneously plus if you add all the influence points up it will be 1500 which is quite a lot compared to anything else the only thing that uh, surpasses that is this big building in the middle which I think is fairly time gated in terms of the access to it if you look at the world progression. So here it, it makes it seem as if you can obtain or get to the next stage through like milestone rewards but it seems to me that it's probably time gated like Battle of the Long Night or Together in Winter or whatever it's called right now where it says it's milestone uh, based, but it's actually just time based. And I think it's on the ninth stage here. Yeah. Could declare war against Glory Checkpoint and Glorious City. And those are these eight surrounding locations. And then the big city here for the, the 3000 influence. You can see on the point scoring, that is by far the highest influence you can get if you hold that. And if you hold that, you can probably stand good stead to control some of the surrounding checkpoints too and mop up influence from them. So the goal is obviously getting your faction, your kingdom, the highest influence possible. And you'll get that through building control. So out of spawn, you're going to want to build up your base and build out and try and control as many buildings as possible. So what you're going to have to do at the start is uh, trade and wait until you can unlock this which I think will allow you to move out of base. You see all these blue bubbles around locations. This means they are not targetable right now. When those bubbles drop, you'll be able to move out of the base. And you're going to want to push out and expand your control over this map. Like I said before, the specifics of how that works is still somewhat alien to me. We haven't seen it yet. I haven't experienced it yet. You can see at the, the bottom right here, there's like 12 tabs. There's so many different uh, pieces of information, so many 
things to read, so many new little specifics. But here in the event description you can see a bit better how it's going to work. I mean it's explained very simply here. The faction of the greatest influence claims the final victory and you can see how the progression across buildings will work when those bubbles drops. And you can see how the alliances are moving further and further towards the middle of the map, towards that uh, uh, great city in the middle. I do wonder if that's actually going to be the best approach when I actually look through it, because whilst the map is sort of designed to like funnel you through to the middle, especially with these eight, ch eight checkpoints, if you can go wherever you want, I do feel like uh, these buildings here might be better value whilst everyone else is distracted potentially. So if you hold this building, you can see it has its own unique characteristic there, which don't entirely know how it works yet, but it has 700 influence and then it will have these four locations which We'll grant 200 influence and buffs. So if you hold uh, that central location, you will basically indirectly hold all of these two, and there will be 1500 influence just from holding that, plus the buffs, which will help you hold them more and more. So I'm hoping there is a bit of strategy here, like we've seen with Siege of Winterfell, for example, where it isn't just mindlessly zerg towards the middle of the map and whoever has the most people, the most stats wins. Hopefully you can try to be a bit more sneaky, you can attack weak points of uh, another alliance, another kingdom. So say up here, uh, you notice this kingdom is significantly weaker than the alliance to your south. Hopefully you could just like push through, take all of these buildings, just hold them in their spawn and let all those passive points tick up and up and up and then you know spread your points across the map and have all the the lower buildings tick up whilst everyone else is fighting over this middle building i'm hoping there is some like tactical variation there but going back to this event description you can see how it works before occupying a city, commanders have to declare war against a city. War can only be declared against enemy cities connected to allied cities by road. So you can't just attack whatever you want. You'll have to say, control this before you can attack this. And there will be like time-gatedness to it. You aren't just able to do whatever the hell you want. You have to slowly progress through the map. You can see here a sneak peek of how the combat system works and it's nothing like we've seen before. I honestly don't even know where to start by imagining how this works until I actually experience it myself. It seems a little bit similar to say like Army of the Dead meets Expedition Beyond I want to say. But it has its own uh, combat system. Where is it? Somewhere in the rules. Yeah, here. Resilience and this whole endurance uh, system. I mean, I, I don't even know where to start fairy crafting this, but if you want to pause it, take screenshots. Maybe this is in the live game right now, actually, and people have already done so. I don't know. I'll wait until I can test their hands on personally. But uh, after a successful declaration of war and waiting for a period of time, Battle phase begins and troops can be deployed to attack the city. The defender can deploy troops to reinforce the city at any time. So there does seem to be a bit of role dependency I want to say. They are sort of push that. There is a talent system. Well there's this. Where you, you have to change between roles. And if you make this switch it will start a one hour cooldown before you can change to another uh, type. You see here, if you're logistics, it will increase your trading efficiency, but for example, if you're offensive, it will reduce your trading efficiency by a ton. And I'm pretty sure everyone at some point is going to have to do logistics. I don't think this is something where you're just going to assign someone to be offensive and they're going to be offensive the entire time. The way it works, especially with the time gating 
uh, it just doesn't work that way. Like, there is no benefit to being anything but logistic at this point, because we literally can't move, all the locations are bubbled, but we can trade. So, there are only benefits to uh, being logistics, and there are also entire talent trees, it seems. There are different ways of advancing this. You need glory points to advance them. I mean, you can really see how, how complicated and overwhelming this is so many new systems but it's very very interesting but these talent trees I think these will be the the most important ones where they increase uh, marching queues so it's basically a, an extra march and I think there's three of them in each tree or four not three but those extra marches are gonna go a long way I think just having one march really restricts how much you can do but I think we're gonna see you're really gonna want to maximize your glory points income and part of the game mode is going to be trying to outpace people in your progression of these talent trees and your progressions with glory points so you become more and more powerful and then you can then snowball that into becoming more and more powerful so if you do the trading system better you do logistics better at the start you can maybe snowball your glory points into uh, more offensive marches and you can then win the fights harder and then that will get you more glory points and then it will snowball more and more and you can just expand your map control through that. We'll have to see how it plays out in practice obviously but that is how I envision it working. You will see here there's offensive and defensive but these aren't like flat buffs. You see here it increases attack for all troops during sieges. I'm pretty sure that just means offensive sieges whereas defensive it is during city defense. So you're really gonna have to want to switch between all three of these based on what you're doing at any given time and probably with talents as well you can reset these I think with a thousand diamonds yeah I don't have any yet so I can't actually do that but I'm sure that will come into play at some point uh, back to the event description trading and transporting seems like it's going to be massive in this I think that's very positive because it means that smaller players uh, will be able to contribute. I think you can see with the combat system, it isn't rally leader based. It seems a bit closer to Siege of Winterfell, which I think is amazing because it won't just be determined by who has the biggest rally leader. But obviously, it, in something like a castle siege, you can have a hundred really solid mid tier accounts, but if someone on the other side has a max account uh, it doesn't matter you're just screwed I much prefer these sort of equalizing elements to the game personally I much prefer that to the, the whale offs I prefer the Siege of Winterfell dynamic to AC for example and they both have their positives but I'm very glad that both are existing simultaneously and it isn't just the full and whale fest obviously we need to see it how important stats are in this. I'm sure they'll be very very important as they always are but it doesn't seem like a huge way will be the sole determining factor in every situation which is great. Uh, trades can be done at merchant cities to obtain armament supplies. Armament supplies obtained need to be transported to frontline cities before they can be used for the construction of frontline cities and the development of troops in fortress cities. So again, the specifics of this uh, is somewhat confusing to me at this point. I haven't experienced how it works specifically, but it's this theme of base building. Where you want to grow your base out and expand quicker than other kingdoms, and then that will let you snowball more and help you obtain more cities and just keep growing your influence like that. And then there's here uh, constructing which I think is just strengthening a location. I'm pretty sure it also gives glory points. You see in the rules, uh, where is it? I think it's here. Yeah, each construction quest grants 30 points. That applies to all three military positions as a means of getting glory points. There is a, an element of pay to win with these glory points, which is a uh, talent point progression in the honor tokens will 
increase your daily limit by 50%. I'm not sure I'm a fan of that because you're gating people's talent progression with a uh, with strictly paid content, which just doesn't feel right to me. Maybe they'll change that. We'll see. And then we can look further into some of the rewards. Now, this reward system is very interesting in that it lets you change and choose the raffle you want. So it lets you change the wheel. So here we have royal badges and then badge chests and this castle skin which is the most broken castle skin I think I've ever seen. I would be amazed if this gets added to the live client to be honest. You see that on its own bonus is enemy casual casualty rate plus 10% which is the legion damage dragon skill at level 9 as an owned bonus which is ridiculous and then 10% total attack reduction. And then on those active bonuses, it is 30% uh, commander damage buff for all commanders, 10% total attack, and I think that is uh, enemy army health or defense reduction It is an attack, I don't quite remember, can't see from this page. Then there is troop appearances, I feel like this one's a little undervalued compared to the other ones. And this one is Blessing Stones. Blessing Stones will be a common theme in these rewards. Uh, for the individual rewards, you will get absurd amounts of these actually looking at it. And then the last one is this Darius prize pool. Right now we see Lario in here. But Darius is actually a new commander, which is in PTR right now. I can probably show that actually. And it's again this ridiculous castle skin. I can probably show that castle skin actually. It really does look very cool. Where is that? Here. Just health reduction, okay. So, here's the castle skin. I mean, it's very dramatic, it's very over the top, but it does look very, very cool. The dragon on the Iron Throne. It does look good. But then, uh, Darius. Where is he down here? So, he is the imp version of Winton it, uh, it seems which if he's released through that raffle sort of surprises me because it's not that good unless he gets awakened like really soon he'll never he won't be usable in pvp his skills do look kind of interesting though i think he might be very good against spearman rebel leaders with his active ability here and the second ability performs free attacks against enemy targets in a conal, a conal area stealing 6,587 max health per attack, so that's like over 19,000 damage with his active, and you can get counter bonuses on that, that would be kind of crazy. And then, when hit by normal attacks, there is an 80% chance to reflect damage up to 10% of health, up to 4,295 damage. I do think these two abilities will add up quite a lot, and he doesn't have a fourth ability yet. So we'll have to see what that is. But all of that is somewhat unrelated. It's just new stuff on there. I'm sure people will be interested to see that. Especially that castle skin. Please, like, please God, do not <laughs> release that. Well, maybe release it into live, but never let anyone have that permanent. That would just be beyond ridiculous. Now, what am I talking about? Do not let that go into live. 10% increased casualty rate as an own bonus is mental. Uh, if you look at rewards, you can see here influence rank. This is actually where your kingdom ranks overall. So if you're the first ranked kingdom overall, everyone in that kingdom will get these speed ups. It's pretty terrible, but 2,000 blessing stones. That is a lot of blessing stones. I think we've all seen since that event on the release of uh, the Dragon Blessing system came out and ended, these have been really slow to get. It's a really slow grind, so this is definitely the main way of getting them in the game. And there's individual elimination rankings, and we see this ridiculous castle skin again. So all the whales with the top eliminations are going to be getting this, but it is only 7 day max. It shouldn't be that game breaking, but it is good. We do see total attack badges here. 
So in Siege of Winterfell, I think we have total health badges and an AC total defense. Maybe it's the other way around. Uh, but this is now, I guess, a free-to-play, in theory, way of getting total attack badges, which is good. And these glory raffle tokens, which are what let you spin this will. Ten of them will give you one spin. Oh, where was I? It was rewards. Rewards. Okay. So that was individual elimination rankings, and then it's individual contribution points, which uh, is a bit more generous. It will go all the way to 10,000, and you can still get those raffle spins. It does say those raffle spins carry over between events also. Unused glory raffle tokens can be kept for use in the next glorious battle. I'm not sure there's actually a benefit to that, looking at the current system of it, but it is good to know. I do like the system of being able to change the wheel. I hope they maybe implement this a bit more, a bit more often. And then another system of rewards. There is a lot of reward systems in this. Is this glory siege system, which is basically like AC, where you'll get the individual contribution points, and there is just an absurd amount of contribution points, uh, milestones you can get to get rewards, and you'll see. Every 10 of these is a spin on those wheels. And then look at all these blessing stones. Think how much this is adding up. 200, 200, 200, 200. It just keeps coming. And you can see how <laughs> far down this uh, scrolling wheel is at the side. This goes on for a while. You can just keep going down and down and down. So it's every 600 points, you'll get a new milestone reward. I don't know how difficult it is to realistically get this final reward, but I do like that you can get heavily rewarded for doing very well in the event. I think that's nothing but a positive. And I'm well there to even go over. I don't think there's much more we, we really know at this point in time. I think we have to let this timer expire and move on to being able to move throughout the map and test it a bit more. Hopefully we can have it refined a little bit before it comes to live, but I am quite excited for this event to be honest. It does seem like it is pushing or promoting highly coordinated kingdoms, which we've seen a shift away from for quite a long time now. Like the old K-19s with CTL and kingdoms like that have just died out entirely because of invasions and even something like hoarding castles for events haven't we seen that with Ash on K4 like they just deliberately stay alone so they can keep all the the buff castles so they do barren events which totally makes sense but there hasn't been much that has incentivized being a, a really highly populated well coordinated functioning kingdom together. Mostly it just ends up in more drama to be honest, like more gathering drama, diamond day drama, and just be an absolute nightmare. So I think this is a positive step. I think it's appealing to more play styles, appealing to more parts of the player base with that, which I do think is good. I will be interested to see how the matchmaking system of this works, because I would somewhat assume it will have to be power matched, a bit like KBK is, because uh, if you match an entirely dead kingdom into like one of the biggest kingdoms in the game, they're just going to get spawn camped and not be able to do anything at all, but maybe it'll be slightly random like CCS, maybe it'll be like Treasure Seeker where we just see uh, K1 through K8 and then all the way through to the rest of the kingdoms in the game. Maybe it'll just work like that. I mean, who really knows? We'll have to see until it's implemented into the live client. There's no way of telling how that'll work on PNA right now. There are obviously more specifics I haven't gone into, like uh, marching bugle systems, the combat system, but we just really don't know how it works yet. But I'll for sure release another video on this when I understand it better. It lasts, I think, five days, is what they've said. But I think it's listed here as lasting seven. 
So there's plenty of time to, to test and figure out how it works a bit more. So stay tuned for that. I'm sure other chroniclers will uh, make videos on it too. I know there are a few who were on a reset with me as well. There was like Grom, uh, Elric, a few people like that who are intending to make videos. So watch out for their videos. I'm sure they have some insights that I don't have as well. Especially if they post on these uh, next phases are released. Because this is a very raw time to post. It's very first impression-y. But there we go. I hope that's given you a, a little bit of an insight into a uh, glorious battle. I'm excited. I think this is going to be a, a fun addition to the game. Let's see what it brings.